Okay, uh, this week we're going to continue working on the spreadsheet that we started a uh, week before last. Uh, we're going to work on the axle data as well as the distance tables. So uh, we will go ahead and get started. The axle data table, the first four columns are exactly like the wheel data table. Um, it pulls the data from the independent data table. So these are talking about the diameters of the axles. We're going to get those from up here. But just as in the diameter or in the wheel data table, we didn't type in these diameters. It's important that you actually go get the data from the independent data table. So to get started, we're going to click in this uh, cell and we're going to set it equal to this cell. So equal to B3 and press return. Then we'll set this cell equal to C3 and this cell equal to D3. Again, the reason we do that is if we change any one of these, so if I change this one to uh, 1 16th, for example, if I change that to 1 16th and press return, you will also see that it changes here. So now these two cells here and here are linked. So if we come back here and I change this back to 1 8th, you will see that it also changes there. All right, the formula. Formula is the same. So right here, we're going to go ahead and just simply type in ID. And to make it easy, we will copy that down. All right? Substitute. Substitute is the same as it was in the wheel data table. You probably don't remember what that is. I fully understand that. So we used equal. In the quotation marks, we put the constant in, which in this case was 3.14 space x space, and we closed the quotations. So again, whatever's inside of the quotes is a constant. It's going to show up every time. Then we type the ampersand. So again, this kind of reads like a sentence, equals 3.14, so equals whatever's inside the quotes, and in this case, whatever's in cell A17. And we press return. So then we can click on that cell, and we can copy it down. Now, it is going to show as a decimal here. There's no way around that. It kind of forces you into it. Don't worry about it. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Now, again, the reason that we do this, okay, if I change the independent data table, so if I change this one eighth to one sixteenth, as soon as I press return, this is going to change to 1 16th, and this is going to change to 0 0.0625, which is the decimal equivalent of 1 16th. So when I press return, you can see that those automatically change. Now, I can see we have a little bit of a problem here. So I've got to come here. Uh, if I come here, you'll notice that when I typed in 1 16th, I forgot to type the equal sign. So it actually made this a date and it's showing here and you may run into that. Don't forget to type in equals when you're doing any of these tables. So I'll type in 1 16th and we'll see if that fixes it. And in fact it did. It didn't here because I have to go back and format this to my question marks. Now it's happy here. It's happy here. It's happy here. 
So you kind of got to keep track of all of it as you're going. All right, go ahead and erase those lines off the screen. Uh, circumference is just calculating circumference. So in this case, it is... Here it is equals 3.14 times, which again is the asterisk, in this case, A17, and we'll press return. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can get rid of those dots there. Okay, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm also going to return this back to what it is supposed to be, which is equals one eighth and now this is what my real data should show so again here what i actually typed was equals 3.14 times a17 and i can click on that cell drag it down and i'm going to go ahead and change decrease the decimal points to two decimals so i have 0 0.39 0 0.59 and 0.79 so go ahead and do what you saw in this video, and then we're going to make another video to discuss the whole idea of how we figure out these rotations and why they're important.